Okay, so now you're coming here and taking that spot. When Africa is going through so many kind of things, the Ebola, the missing girls, what is your opinion on that? those kind of cases? Well, listen, I think that, you know, something like Ebola, as long, aside, alongside the, the missing girls, the Chibok girls, isn't just an Africa problem. I think the inter international community needs to come together. Well, it's a global issue. Um, that region, West Africa, Mano River uh, Union, Sierra Leone, Guinea, Liberia, is now on the map of people's consciousness here in the United States because of this virus. Because rather than exporting all the good things that are possible out of the region, we exported these two American, uh, uh, one doctor, one aid worker with this Ebola virus. And now all of a sudden people realize that these, this region is our neighbor. And that if the people in this region sneeze, we should all say Gesundheit. It's heartbreaking, number one. I think that everybody is trying to figure out what is the solution, right? Because the reality is... Um, the, the solutions, the way that I understand it, or the way that at least it's shared with the with the with the community or with the society, is that the solutions are slim. You know, it's hard to figure out how to to quarantine these things, how to control it. So I am so thankful for those people who are brave enough to be there, who have the skills, those doctors and nurses and healthcare providers, and professionals who are who are risking their own lives, frankly. Uh, what I think. Uh, is the critical message though around this outbreak is that it's not a function of the virus the infection is a function of the virus the outbreak is a function of the absence of robust medical infrastructure to support the well-being of these communities uh, I've been working in Kailan district in Sierra Leone for over 10 years now I've been going out there uh, 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 regularly the paucity of quality health care available to most people in that region would blow the mind of the average American or Brit who doesn't have full understanding of what these what these folks are facing. Basic things like uh, like access to uh, to to cleaning supplies and uh, and to sanitary water, the basic things that you would need to stave off such an outbreak. Are, are often lacking. Certainly in terms of Ebola, my family's from Sierra Leone. My family is there in Sierra Leone right now. So this is a very personal story for me. The world needs to step up. They need to step up and they need to deliver the aid in terms of manpower, in terms of equipment that's needed. And also in terms of the Chibok girls, the Nigerian government on its own doesn't have the capacity to find them. That's what they say. So the international community needs to stand up and to help. Those girls need to come back. This Ebola outbreak needs to be contained and basically eliminated. So it's not so much a function of the virus as it is a function of the absence of properly deployed investment monies in these communities. And I think that once this, uh, this, 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 this outbreak is contained and we have good news today out of Senegal and out of Nigeria that seems the WHO has said that seems the virus has been contained there, that I think once we contain it in, in, uh, in the other uh, parts of West Africa that we can actually use it as a platform for a greater focus on the root causes of the outbreak. Um, so I'm heartbroken about these issues. I wish that there was more of a, of a social, a global kind of conversation happening. It's great to see people who have those resources stepping in now, finally. Um, but at the same time, I don't know that we should always look to the West Okay, what would you say to those critics who say that maybe Africa needs to step up and also take care of its own problems? Listen, everyone has a role to play here. I don't think anyone should be looking at just sitting back. I think that African governments have a role to play. Six of the ten fastest growing you know, um, economies in the past ten years, in the past decade, were in Africa. We are doing well. We are rising. And with that comes the responsibility of standing up and taking your place and also leading the charge to make your country, your continent better. Right? Like, we need to figure out our own infrastructural and social and political and economic kind of um, infrastructure. We need, to we need to figure that out in a way that we don't have to look outside of ourselves for that support. You know, and I think we have the, the natural resources to be.
be able to set ourselves up for that. Um, I'm not, you know, I know I haven't been over. I'm dying to get back over there. Uh, uh, probably a poor use of the word. I'm really anxious to get back over. I want to send, be a part of sending a message that this is not the, the apocalypse. This is not the end of the world. Right now, my heart, as I said, is broken. I, I think about all those people, all those health workers, all those families who have been touched by Ebola and have lost lives to Ebola. Um, so I think, you know, it's about making sure that awareness, that consciousness is, is there, is, 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 is always part of the conversation. Because at the end of the day, it's a global issue, right? Because if it gets hard and it's there, as we know, it can easily show up on anybody's shores, you know? So it's about making sure that it's always in our consciousness and always keeping those people in our hearts and prayers. People are in fact surviving, not only here in the United States and in Europe, but also in Liberia, Sierra Leone, Guinea. With the proper medical attention, people are, are surviving this. So it's not a death sentence.